My name is Bella. I'm a 45 years old housewife. My husband Peter and I have two high school daughters. We had a peaceful marriage with no drama, but that doesn't mean I don't have any complaints. There are many things about the children, but the biggest frustration is my husband. He is a nervous wreck for better or worse. He thinks that all the housework and childcare should be done by his wife, and he never tries to do any of it. In all these years we have been married, he has never taken out the garbage. He does not cook for himself, not even instant food. Even when I'm sick, he doesn't do it. Don't slack off. It's your duty as a wife to take care of the house. My husband is the kind of man who would yell at me like that. I never heard a word of concern or care from him. If he had at least brought home enough money, I would have been less dissatisfied. But my husband's income was low. I know it's because of the recession, but it's hard to live like this. Both of our daughters in high school want to go to college. I knew we would still have to spend a lot of money. I used to work as part-time, but it was getting hard to make ends meet, so I became a full-time employee. That made things a little better financially, but working a full-time job cut into my time for housework. I have to work overtime and sometimes came home late. My daughters are independent, so they willingly do what they can do on their own. The problem is my husband. He hates it more than anything when someone messes up his schedule. Hey, it's almost 7 p.m. Why dinner isn't ready yet? Whenever I work late, he calls me on my phone. When I rush home, he's super grumpy and ignores me. Are you a small kid? Just get yourself some food from a deli or something. If I try to tell him something like that, what? I am so tired from work. Why do I have to do that? He gets so angry. Sometimes I talk back to him. I'm working too, and I'm tired too. You know. I was fed up with my husband. One morning, I talked to my husband about something. I'm going to the hospital with my dad on Monday. My dad has aged a lot since my mom died two years ago. My parents' house is too far away, and I can't go there often. So I was worried about him. Then, my husband made me an unexpected proposal. My parents are dead, and your father is now my only living relative. Would you like him to move in with us? And my father is now living with us. My father has become completely weak in the legs and feet, and has regular checkups at the hospital. Every time I take him to the hospital, my husband asked about his condition. Is he going to be all right? How is he? He's fine. He says he has to stay strong until he sees his great grandchildren. My father and my husband seem to have no problem. It's comforting to know that you're concerned about him. Huh? What are you talking about? My husband immediately denied it. I was puzzled to understand what he meant. I'm not worried about your father. Attending the hospital takes a certain amount of time and effort. I'm just making sure you have enough time to do your chores. Can you prepare dinner, clean the house? I'm asking you if you were doing everything properly. You know, my husband was that kind of person. I'm so dumbfounded that I'm speechless. I sighed and hurried through the housework as usual. My husband's selfishness is an everyday occurrence. He has always lived as he pleased. He would complain about me working late, but he never leaves a single message when he is working late. 
when I send him a message asking him why he's not home. He's like, over time, of course. Moreover, he never tells me in advance what he's going to do on his day off. He's always making plans on a spur of the moment. We're going out today. It's not uncommon for him to suddenly say stuff like that. If I tell him I have something to do, he asks me to cancel it, as if it's something absolutely right. It's just absurd. Especially in the last few years. He seemed to be working overtime more and more, and often misses dinner with us. And yet, he never contacts me, nor does he respond when I ask. So I have no choice but to prepare dinner for him every time. Only when I think he's working overtime and don't prepare dinner, he comes home on time and complains. He was a real pain in the ass. To be honest, I don't want to spend my old age alone with him. I found myself thinking about that. Then, on another Monday, I drove to the hospital with my father. We were supposed to go home after having the usual test and hearing the result of the diagnosis as usual. But then, something unexpected happened. What? The doctor in front of me was making a difficult face. My father next to me is silently staring at the doctor. A cancer? Yes, there is a suspicion of cancer during the endoscopy. Since a detailed examination is necessary, we'll have to ask you to stay in the hospital. Oh no! I didn't know what to say. I don't even remember what the doctor said after that. When I got home, my father said he wanted to be alone for a while and hid in his room. When I saw the door to his room close, I went into my bedroom and shed tears. My husband came home late that night. I told him about my father. He listened in silence. I'm going to be busy with it, so it might be difficult for me to do stuff around the house, you know? My husband didn't like what I said, but he didn't say anything. I wondered if he indeed understands. That's what I thought at the time. But I soon learned that I was naive in that perception. On the holiday, right after my father was admitted to the hospital for tests, my two daughters were out and away. As I was walking down the hallway with the vacuum cleaner, I heard a noise coming from my father's room. Could it be a thief? I thought so and grabbed the hard pipe of the vacuum cleaner as a weapon. I fearfully looked into my father's room. I fell on the ground when I saw who it was. It was my husband. Peter, what are you doing? I asked my husband in a loud voice. What am I doing? I'm throwing away stuff. What? You don't need your father's stuff anymore. Oh my gosh, Peter. My husband is taking it upon himself to throw away my father's personal belongings. Clothes packed in the big bags, his favorite books tied up with strings, even his photo albums are in the trash. What the hell? Stop it! Just stop it! I try to stop him in a panic. But your father has cancer, right? He's not going to survive, so we don't need this. My husband has just said the most ridiculous thing. What? We need more tests. We don't know yet. Don't you dare assume he's dying. But he's lost a lot of weight lately. I'm pretty sure it's cancer. I will have this room when he's gone, you know? You have your room? What are you doing? Really? Shut up. I can do whatever I want. My anger reached its peak with my husband's terrible words. He is a selfish man by nature. But I thought his relationship with my father wasn't so bad. I was even grateful to him for allowing me to live with my father. 
but this is just too wrong, too much to take in. I was against moving in with him in the first place. You'd be neglecting the housework. You're the one who suggested having him moving in with us. Well, I'm not getting anything in return for it. What did you say? Your dad is a cheapskate. I thought he would give me an allowance or something. What? Did you expect such a thing? I was speechless for a moment. I have put up with my husband's arrogance my whole life. But this statement was so cruel. I screamed, feeling my eyes turn red with anger. I divorce you. Get out of my house. Right now. My husband was so enraged by my fury that he became slurred and ran out of the house without a word. After a few days, I calmed down. However, I can't stand to be married to such a horrible person any longer. At any rate, I wanted to prepare the documents for divorce. I was not sure what the necessary procedures are. I went to a cafe, alone for the first time in a while, to think about the future. On my way home, I witnessed an unexpected scene. Half a month after I kicked him out, I got a call from my husband. He wanted to talk, so I let him. He seemed to be in a good mood and looked the same as before. So, what is it you want to talk about? I've been thinking about it, and I'm thinking, wouldn't it be weird for me to leave the house? You should be the one to leave. Why is that? Because I'm the breadwinner in the family. I'm the one who's been making your living. So, why should I leave? What is this person talking about? Has this person already forgotten? This house is in my father's name. My father bought this house. So it's only natural that you have to leave. I didn't think he had forgotten. I laugh at my husband's stupidity. Yes, the house belongs to my father. He bought it for us when we proposed moving in together. Before that, we lived in a tiny apartment. My father paid all the expenses for the new house, and I felt sorry for him for that. But my husband was secretly thinking to have some allowance from my father. How could he be so stupid as to forget who owns this house? How can he think that it is his house? This house will belong to me and my children when my father dies. Whatever. Then it will be yours when your father dies. And it will be a joint property between you and me. Am I right? What? What do you mean? You said you were divorcing me. If we get divorced, we'll split the property. Then half of this house is mine. I'm sorry, but you're wrong. An inheritance from one's parents can't be jointly owned by a couple. Too bad. What? Really? Well, there are exceptions, depending on the circumstances. But this house is still my father's. I mean, your father will be gone soon. And this house will be yours. Please, don't decide on your own that someone's father will be gone soon. Before my father is gone, you and I will be divorced. Then I won't divorce you. What an idiot he is. Do you think I'm going to say I'm not getting a divorce? And let me say one more time. My father is still alive. He has cancer. He doesn't have that long. When my husband said that, someone came in. Too bad. I have a long life ahead of me, son. My father appeared and said with a smile on his face. His legs were weak, but he appeared strangely energetic and high-spirited. What? Why are you here? My husband was in a panic. 
I guess he didn't think my father would be home when he was supposed to be in the hospital. Of course I'm here. This is my house. And the tests are done, you know? What do you mean? I quietly told my husband, who looked at me in a panic. My father didn't have cancer. Huh? The results of a thorough examination beneath a benign polyp. That was easily removed. He's still weak in his legs, but otherwise, he's in excellent health. What does that mean? It means that I'm going to live a long time. My father took over my words and said with a big smile on his face. Well, you made a mess in my room, Peter. It was hard to clean up. But, well, after the divorce, your room will be open. I can use it as a storage room. And I'll have more room. Thank you for leaving. I didn't know my father was such a character. His miraculous recovery from his suspected cancer has given him a new lease on life. I guess he's 10 years younger. My husband, who had been in a state of shock for a while, came back to himself and gave a forced smile. I'm glad you're doing well. Then, why don't you change the name of the house to your daughter as a gift while you were still healthy? No way! That's none of your business. By the way, you have been cheating on my daughter, haven't you? What? Why do you say that? You want to call it as a man's worthiness? You can't go by that excuse. You don't make much money. You can't say that. In front of my, in front of my husband's flustered eyes, I held out several photographs and documents. Can you explain this, honey? You said you've been in a business hotel for the past half month since you left home. But you've been at the house of your secret girlfriend. See? Here's the proof. I tracked them down using the private detective. Pictures showed my husband and the woman he was having an affair with making out. Yes. I had gone to a cafe that day and happened to see my husband. He was with her, holding hands and making out in public. I thought it was strange that your salary didn't change even though you were working overtime. You've been visiting your mistress for a long time. No, overtime was real. You don't have to lie. I even checked with the company. They told me there's been no overtime for the past year. Oh no. You've been working a lot of overtime. That means the affair started at least a year ago. Right? That's... So, you and I are getting a divorce. I'm gonna charge you alimony and child support. Be ready. No, please, don't do this. Now. Get the hell out! My husband ran out of the house, hunched over the side of my furiousness. I don't need to tell you what happened to him after that. I filed for alimony against him and the woman he cheated on me with, plus child support for him. I need to make sure he pays for the children's future. He moved in with the woman he was having an affair with. They were left penniless after paying the alimony. They moved into a small, old apartment and are forced to live in poverty. Even so, they were rubbing shoulders at first, but their relationship didn't last more than a month. How do I know? Because my ex-husband called me. Listen, she doesn't do any chores at all. She gets up at random times in the morning and night, goes to bed, and never takes care of me. We always have to eat delivery or TV dinner. She doesn't clean the house, so there is dust everywhere. She doesn't take out the garbage, so there's no place to step in the house. The woman with whom he was having an affair seemed to have been pretending to get his attention. 
but now they are living together, she's revealed her true colors. She's not even working. She's just hanging out at home. I can't take it anymore. Please, help me. What? Why should I help you? You are finally with someone you wanted to be with, even if you had to fake working over time. I can't ruin that kind of happiness for you. Well, good luck with that. You made a fool of us, and you'll pay for it. I'm sorry. For now on, I'll help you around the house. I won't act like a jerk to you, and I'll take good care of your father. <laughs> it's too late. There's nothing you can do now. Oh no, wait, please. Goodbye, Peter. I hung up. Listening to a stupid man's stupid story makes my ears itch. Then, apparently, my ex-husband left his life with her and ran away. Their relationship was only good while it was a secret affair. I heard that my ex-husband had to quit his job because the truth had spread throughout the company and people around are looking at him like he was a total jerk. He deserves it. Now that he's gone, my family is at peace. My daughters are enjoying life as usual. Their father was hardly ever home. And even when he was, he was so selfish that they have no feelings for him at all. They even laugh and say they are glad he's gone. Well, they are adolescents, so the idea of their father cheating was nothing but creepy. They say they'll never invite him to their weddings. Speaking of my dad, he's feeling much better now. He's having a lot of fun at the senior citizens club. He seems to be getting to know the ladies in the club. I am still struggling with work and housework. But there are no more obstacles in my way. Life is beautiful now. I'd like to start preparing for happy retirement. Thank you for watching till the end. Please subscribe to our channel if you like. See you in the next video.